everyone! Today we're reading the book The Patchwork Garden by Diane Deanda and illustrations by Oksana Kamraska. It's also a book that's bilingual, which means it's in English and another language. So it's in English and Spanish. And the Spanish title of The Patchwork Garden is Peri... Oh, I'm going to try my best. Peritos de Huerto. So The Patchwork Garden. When we read the story, we're going to look for story structure. So, the beginning, middle, and end. Also, if there's a problem, a conflict, and then a solution at the end. So let's see what we find. Before we start, I want to notice that the first top of the paragraph here is in English, and then beneath the picture, it's in Spanish. So throughout the whole book, it's like this, which is super cool. So if you had somebody who spoke Spanish, they'd be able to read the same story as you in their own language. So let's jump in. Abuela sat near the window, where she could see the tiny stitches she was making on the bright green square of cloth. Abuela means grandmother. She smiled because it was the last square she needed to finish at the patchwork quilt. Abuela liked to tell stories about when she was a little girl. Tonya loved the stories she told. I think this is Tonya, the main character. When I was a girl, my family lived where there were lots of empty land. I planted vegetable garden on my own little square patch of land. I can still taste the fresh tomatoes I grew. They tasted much sweeter than the ones you buy in the store, said Abuela. I wish I could have my very own vegetable garden, replied Tonya. But there's nothing but cement around our apartment building. Looks like they live in the middle of the city. All you need is a little patch of land, and you can grow some tomatoes, spinach, broccoli, or even squash and carrots, encouraged Abuela. Hmm, said Tonya. There's a little patch of dirt behind the church, but it's full of weeds. That's a good sign, said Abuela. That means the soil is soft enough for plants to grow once you take out the weeds. So I guess weeds are a good sign. If you see weeds, it means the soil's good. The next morning, Tonya and Abuela went to the church and talked to Father Ansmalo. So there's a priest, like uh, Father taught at our church. It sounds like a great idea, said Father Ansmalo. There will be a beautiful green plants instead of dirty, ugly weeds. And you can take all the vegetables you want, added Donia. Ah, said Father Anslamo, thinking of fresh salads and steamed vegetables, beautiful and healthy. Later that afternoon, Tonya and her big brother Carlos and her father stood on the little square of dirt. Tonya and Carlos pulled and yanked out weeds. They used small hand shovels called trowels to dig out the bigger ones. Then their father used his big shovel and dug into the dirt. We need to turn the soil and soften it up for planting, he said as, he, as they worked. They also added some fertilizer to the soil to help the seeds plant and grow. When they were done, they took big cans of water from the pickup truck and, went and wet the soil down. So there's a tiny patch behind the church but a tiny patch is enough to make a big difference. After they finished, they picked up Abuela and drove to the garden store. Abuela helped Tonya pick out packages of carrots, spinach, and squash seeds. Then they chose little containers with small sprouting broccoli plants and tiny green tomato plants. The lady at the cash register handed Tonya cards on small sticks with pictures of vegetables she had bought. This tells you all the vitamins you will get from the different plants in your garden. She explained with a smile. It's really cool to grow plants on your own. You kind of get an idea of everything that goes into it. It's not just straight from the store and it's a mystery. You know exactly what happened to it because you took care of it. The next day, Abuela and Tonya arrived on the little patch of dirt with plants and seeds and their watering cans. First, we put on our straw hats to protect us from the sun while we work warned Abuela. I have a hat kind of like that. I'm going to wear it with our story. That's better. It's not a straw hat, but it'll do. Doña was so excited she could barely tie the ribbon that helped keep the hat on her head. 
Now we dig the holes for the seeds and plants, said Abuela as she handed Tonya a towel. A trowel, not a towel. That doesn't make sense. As she handed Sonia, Tonya a trowel. It was mine when I was a girl your age. It has planted so many seeds and it can almost do it by itself, laughed Abuela. For the zucchini squash and spinach, they dug small holes only about an inch deep. They dropped in the seeds, then covered them over with the dirt they had taken out. Vines will grow with the flowers on little stems that will turn into big green squash. Spinach will cover the ground with dark leaves. Oh, and green vegetables are filled with vitamins, said Abuela. The carrots need more work. Tonya and Abuela had to loosen up the dirt so the carrots could grow long and deep. Carrots are roots. We need to make room for them to grow underground. Carrots keep our eyes healthy and help protect us from getting sick. Well, we should eat lots of carrots, explained Abuela. as carrots, vitamin C. Finally, they took all the little tomato plants out of their small plastic pots, tickled the soil around the roots to loosen them up, and dug holes just the right size. I like how the author used the word tickled. I'm not trying to make the ground laugh, but the motion you use with your fingers to tickle, like, they're doing that in, in the dirt to loosen it up. I think that's some really good descriptive language by the author, because I could see it right in my head. Tonya patted the soil around each plant with her hands until the dirt was nice and flat. Then she stuck the cards with a picture of tomato and silvery green flowers, flower of broccoli in front of the row of plants. Each card said vitamin C in big letters and listed more vitamins in smaller letters. When she was done, Abuela sprinkled the garden with her big, big green watering can. Ooh, double adjectives, a big and a green watering can. I know, I know one more thing that needs a sprinkle, said Tonya, stretching her arms and hands towards Abuela. They both laughed as Abuela poured out the last of the water and watched rivers of mud roll down Tonya's arms and through her fingers. She wanted to play with the water, so Tonya got to get wet too. Abuela walked Tonya at home each day after school, right past the little patch of garden. And each day they would sprinkle the thirsty plants with their watering cans and pull out any weeds that had sneaked into between the plants. In a few short weeks, the garden was green with lacy carrot tops in a row vines of squash curling on the ground and bushy green tomato plants. Wrinkled green spinach leaves lined the edge of the garden and broccoli flowers bloomed. As the plants grew more and more, more and more of the children and their parents passing by on their way home from school stopped to look and talk with Tonya and Abuela about their garden. They're really building a community around this garden. That's pretty special. I wish I could have a garden, sighed many of the children. I wish we had a place for a garden, the parents would sigh back. I wonder if they're going to solve this problem similar to how Tonya and her abuela did. I feel sad, abuela, said Tonya one day. Why, mijita? Mijita means like granddaughter. Uh, don't you like working in the garden? asked Abuela, wrinkling her forehead. Oh no, I love the garden. It just makes me sad when other kids wish they had one too. We need a bigger space for all kinds. All... <laughs> we need a bigger space for all the kids who would like to have a garden. Hmm, said Abuela. All we really need are little patches of land to make their wishes come true. Tonya's eyes got very wide. The sadness she felt seemed to melt away and she began to jump up and down. Over and over again she crowed. I know where some are. It would be just like your patchwork quilt. All the little squares can make one big garden. That's where the title comes from. Just like how a quilt has different patches on it with different colors and design like her grandma makes. They're going to do different squares of garden. The next few days were very busy for Tonya and Abuela. First, Tonya made a list of all the patches of empty land that she had noticed in the neighborhood. There were two at the park where flowers or bush bushes had dried up and had not been replaced. There were little patches of dirt in front of different stores she and Abuela passed on their way to school. Next, she asked Abuela to come with her to talk with the store owners. 
Think of how beautiful it would be to have a garden right next to your store, Tonya told them. Think how much easier it would be to keep your store clean without the empty spaces. No more customers carrying dirt into your store on their dusty shoes, added Abuela. Yes, said Mr. Sanchez, the owner of the shoe repair store. They're convincing them that it's a good idea to have gardens so they can use all these different stores and uh, restaurants to help them. I'd love to have a garden here, said Miss Ruiz, pointing to the space in front of her beauty salon. It would be a great to have a vegetable garden in front of the family clinic, said Dr. Martinez. Vegetables make you healthy, you know, she added with a wink. And because you eat them fresh from the garden, they have more vitamins than the ones in the store that have traveled so far from where they grew. The park director liked the idea so much that she put a little wire fence around to the two little gardens so no one would trample the plants when they were in the park. Wow, that's super cool. Everyone in their community is coming together. When she got home, Tonya wrote the address of each garden patch on a card. At the top of each card, she wrote the Patchwork Garden Club. Throughout the next week, Tonya gave cards to all the children who sighed and wished they had a garden of their own. All they were all they were asked to do was bring some of the vegetables to the farmer's market in the park to share with others who did not get a piece of the patchwork garden. This way, everyone in the neighborhood will have a chance to have fresh vegetables to make healthy meals, Tonya told each member of the Patchwork Garden Club. Ooh, this page is really cool. We'll talk about the cool text feature here in a second. Soon, all across the neighborhood, there has been where there had been bare patches of dirt, little green sprouts began to break through the earth. In a few weeks, long squash lay hidden under green leafy vines that covered the ground. Bouquets of broccoli stood in a row, and the carpet of spinach level circled the ground. Red tomatoes hung like Christmas bulbs from the dark green stalks, and the delicate tops of carrots danced in the breeze. Wow, some really good figurative and uh, descriptive language there. Then all of a sudden, a sound like the softest hum filled the air for blocks and blocks. Mmm, said all the children standing in the Patrick Garden squares across the neighborhood as they bit into the sweetest tomatoes they ever had. So all the kids eating tomatoes like, mmm, so yummy. <laughs> and it was the music that they heard throughout the town. What a great story. I love how it started as one little girl's dream and she was able to inspire her whole community to want to build a garden and they all worked together to help each other. So there were, there were a few problems in the story and a few solutions. I'm going to think of the main problem. The main problem here was that Tonya wanted a garden but there wasn't any space. Tonya wanted a garden, but there wasn't any space. And their solution was, not just at the beginning, the beginning started with Father uh, Alumsis, but it continued out through the whole community. The solution was, Tonya and Abuela got the community to offer spots for the garden. So we had our conflict and our solution. I think that's what makes a great story, when there's a beginning, middle, and end, but also something that the main characters have to solve. To have an ending where you go, wow, they really accomplished something. I'm going to set this down. A challenge I have for you guys at home, we can make our own patchwork garden from all our different homes. You can, if you have a garden at home, take a picture of your patch of garden to send to me, or you can draw a picture of what you would want to put in your garden. Send me those pictures and I'll put together a whole patchwork quilt of our own garden. All right, I can't wait to see your pictures. Bye guys.